In this video, I'll be showing you how you can use the new SRT feature available in vMix 23. SRT stands for Secure Reliable Transport, and it's a point-to-point -point protocol for sending fixed latency streams over an unreliable internet. So first, we're going to demonstrate how you can set an output using SRT. To do this, we're going to click the Settings tab, and then select the Outputs slash SRT tab. Now in the vMix 4 Cam Pro editions, you will see four different outputs here. In all other editions, you'll have just one output. So we're going to configure output one today by clicking the cog icon. You can see a checkbox here called Enable SRT, where we can enable the SRT output. And now as the type, we have three different types that are a part of the SRT standard. Caller, Listen, and Rendezvous. Now Caller, means that this SRT output will try to connect to another system encoder or decoder that's been set as a listener. So caller and listener are both two sides of the connection that connect together. Now rendezvous is a little bit different where you configure both ends as rendezvous and you configure both ends with the IP address of the other and then they'll both try to connect each other and whichever one is the first to connect will establish the connection. This is really handy for situations where you don't have access to the firewall to open up ports or uh, to allow access in or out of the network and is a way to get through those firewalls in that situation by having both sides trying to connect to each other simultaneously. For more information on the different types and connection methods, uh, check out our help file at vmix.com slash help. But for today, we're just going to set this SRT output as a listener. We're going to set it up as basically a server that other vMixers or decoders can connect to. And this is where we can select the port. This is the port to listen on on this computer to receive any connections. So we're just going to leave it at the default port 10,000, but you can configure this for anything. And noting when using a listener, you'll need to open up that port in your firewall or router to allow others to connect in over the internet. So we'll select port 10,000 here. Now this is where we can set the latency. Now the latency is the fixed amount of latency between the two points and should be set a lot higher than the latency of your network. So you may want to do some network testing such as pinging the two points and say you have 100 milliseconds between the two locations you want to connect together. We probably recommend say 400 milliseconds or four times the amount of latency on the network for the most reliable results. And if your stream starts getting jittery or it's losing frames, you want to increase that latency until you get a reliable connection between the two points. Now, as we're just testing on our local network here, we'll just leave this at the default of 200 milliseconds. We can also set a passphrase and key length if we want to enable encryption over the connection. And finally, down the bottom here, we can select a quality, which is the compression quality that you want to send and we have HEVC and H.264 presets available here, but you can also click the cog icon and customize the bitrate of both the audio and the video. And we can also tick the box to use the hardware encoder. Now on GeForce graphics cards from NVIDIA, they're limited to two hardware encodes per system. So if you're using the hardware encode for the recording and also the stream, you may already be using the two encodes available, in which case you want to untick this box so that it falls back using the CPU-based software encoder. If you have a Quadro card, they have an unlimited number of encodes, only limited by the capabilities of the particular card. If you have a P2000 or higher Quadro cards, that might be handy if you're wanting to have more than two hardware encodes available. So for this example, we're going to choose hey, 264 at 8 megabits per second, which is a reasonable bit rate for high quality uh, 1080p encoding. So the resolution that's used for this output settings is what your master resolution is down here in the bottom left hand corner. So we're going to be sending 1080p 59.94, but we can also customize the resolution by changing the output to SD or 720 
or 1080 if this were a 4K production and we wanted to downscale it to 1080. But because we're leaving it at the default, it'll exactly match whatever our production is. And last but not least, we can also customize the audio channels. So we can set a separate audio bus over this output. Um, we can set multiple channels together. Um, SRT supports up to eight channels of audio embedded into each stream. But we're just gonna leave this as the master stereo audio output today for this demonstration. So I could just click OK. Now once I tick that box and click OK, it'll start enabling that output. It's ready to go. You don't need to start and stop the SRT output for it to work. But if you wanted to turn it on or off during the production, you can click the cock icon here next to the external button and you can go to the external tab here and you can tick or untick these, these outputs to enable or disable them uh, with SRT. So now we've created that output. It's listening and it's waiting for a connection. So let's connect to that SRT stream. Now usually I'd, I'd be at another location over the internet to do this. I would open up another copy of vMix or I'd configure an SRT compatible decoder to connect to that output. But we're just going to do this all from the same vMix system just for the demonstration purposes today. So to do this I'll click add input and here I could select the stream or SRT tab. Now under the stream type dropdown, I've got the same caller, listener, and rendezvous options I mentioned before. Now, as I've configured the output as a listener, I wanna set this side as the caller. And this is where I could enter in the host name, also known as the IP address for the stream and also the port. Now you might remember we configured the port as 10,000. So let's go and configure that here. Now the host name is the IP address uh, for the computer that I want to connect to. Now this will need to be the public IP address. That is the IP address that's visible on the internet. So you may want to Google search for finding what your public IP address is from that computer in order to connect to it. For example, if you type in here as the host name a local IP address, it's not going to work. You'll need to find out what the public IP address is uh, in order to connect to that remote copy of vMix. But since we're on the same computer, I can just type in localhost as the host name. Now I can also configure the latency here, which should match the latency configured on the output. Now if you select different latency on both the output and the input, it will use whatever is the highest latency. So if the output was configured to 500 and I configure 200 here, well it's going to use 500, whatever is the greatest. And I can use the passphrase here and encryption settings to exactly match the output. If it's asking for a passphrase and I type it in incorrectly here, it won't connect. We have a checkbox to use the hardware decoder. Now it's important to note that there is no two stream limitation on decoding. It's just as many inputs as is supported by that particular graphics cards decoder. So we can tick that box pretty safely on pretty much any system uh, without worrying about running into a decoding limit. We also have some optional par parameters such as decoder delay and stream ID. We won't go into detail on what they are in this video, but you could find out from the help file more information about those. So now we've set caller, local host, and port 10,000, and I can click OK to add that video. And here you can see my output that I've configured in the SRT is now available as a source in vMix connecting via SRT and you can see it has a little bit of delay which is based on that 200 millisecond delay plus a small amount of decoding delay. But the important thing about SRT is it's a fixed amount of latency. So you'll be able to say sync that up with the rest of your production by delaying your other inputs or uh, adjusting the audio delays if you so choose. And I can connect multiple one, uh, SRT streams in vMix just by following the same steps. And in fact, I could connect to that same stream again. And now I've got multiple streams available here. Uh, and I can also record these SRT streams using the multi-quarter feature. So I can open up the multi-quarter uh, window, which is available in the 4K and Pro editions, and I can select these cameras to record. Now it's important to note that vMix will record these in the raw recording format. That is exactly the same compression as is coming in over SRT. This won't use any additional CPU usage. So these additional compression formats, such as vMix AVR MP4, 
uh, you don't need to worry about any of those configurations. They'll just be basically ignored and then the SRT raw format will be recorded instead in transport stream format. The reason it does this is it saves CPU usage um, and keeps and preserves the quality of that SRT output. For more information, you can visit our website at vms.com. You can check out the help file or you can try the free 60 day trial to test out SRT for yourself. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix video or head to vmix.com for a free 60 day trial. See you later.